All right, good morning and welcome to my session on how to level up your Drupal 8 configuration management. Uh, my name is Scott Weston. I'm a principal Drupal architect at Bounteous. Uh, I've been doing Drupal since about 2007. Um, and my biggest piece of housekeeping, yes, the slides are available. They're on the MidCamp site right now. So uh, feel free to uh, download those and use those as a reference. So I, like I said, I am with Bounteous. We, we're a company that builds big picture digital solutions for some big names. Uh, some of the logos I'm sure you've, you've recognized there. Uh, just a little bit uh, about what we're going to be talking about today. Uh, it's really solving a problem or answering, a, a question, answering questions in one way. And the problem is, how can you operate Drupal environments uh, such as dev, stage, and prod for one site with different configurations in each of those and at the same time maintain your sanity? That's, that's kind of the driving force for me. Uh, as as uh, I've progressed through Drupal 8 uh, from, the, from the early days of Drupal 8, uh, configuration management out of the box is kind of heavy handed. Uh, so I feel over time we've developed a, a nice approach to configuration management that, that solves the majority of, of the, uh, the challenges that we have. Um, a little bit about what we're going to do. We're going to talk through a, a hypothetical scenario that's going to be very contrived. It's not going to be like a real world scenario. Uh, then we're going to talk about the tools that I use uh, in approaching the scenario. And then we're going to talk about my favorite recipe, the config miso. Uh, and once we get through that, then we'll actually, uh, if time allows, hopefully we'll have some time to do a hands-on demo because we know how awesome those go uh, during presentations. Uh, so um, I have a lot to pack in uh, in the in the next uh, 27 minutes. So um, uh, you know, fasten your seatbelt because we're gonna we're gonna slam on the accelerator here. All right. So uh, the scenario that I want to present to you today is uh, let's, uh, just a garden variety website. We have we have dev staging and production environments, and we have some needs uh, that we put into a spreadsheet here about what we want different uh, between those as far as configuration goes. Uh, a couple of things to point out here would be like for development, we want the develop module, develop generate. Uh, we want web profiler turned on in case we need to do anything with that uh, on the development environment. But in staging and production, we don't want those turned on. Uh, another example would be for robots.txt. Uh, in robots.txt, we want to always have it disallow everything for uh, search engine crawlers on dev and stage in case they get to it, uh, but we want to give uh, the, the content uh, or site administrator the ability to edit robots.txt as they need. And then uh, just for uh, developer sanity, we want to have uh, some color indication of what environment we're on, so green for dev, yellow for stage, red for production. And then uh, on this hypothetical site, we use blocks everywhere to like augment content. So we really don't want to manage those uh, with the default configuration management. So we just want to basically tell configuration management, just don't do anything with blocks. Uh, don't try to manage those blocks for us. We'll just keep that in active configuration in the database. Uh, my tip here is make a spreadsheet, uh, share it with the team, make sure you have conversations around it, socialize it so that, that everybody knows uh, what the approach is for configuration management so that if you have uh, a developer uh, you know, making some changes, what they change you know, meets these uh, expectations as far as when they push code to a different environment or they do a config import uh, for a particular site. Okay, so some of the tools that I use uh, in this, uh, it, it, some of these may be uh, familiar. Uh, we have configuration ignore, um, spoiler, it, helps you ignore configuration. Uh, there's also a configuration split, and this is where a lot of the magic happens in, the, in having modules and configuration different per environment. Both of those do require config filter, which basically acts as a traffic cop from the file system when you're importing configuration, so it knows whether to actually pass it into the system for, uh, for you know, uh, making it the active configuration, or if it just kind of throws it out the window and says, don't worry about that. Uh, there's also uh, a, a tip that I have here is uh, the configuration split uh, module user interface has a lot of select boxes on it. 
So using something like Chosen, which will, uh, if we get to the demo today, I'll be able to show you, it makes, that, it makes your life a lot easier than scrolling through hundreds of uh, items in a multi-select uh, select box. And then if you uh, are uh, heavy on web forms, there is a web form config ignore. Uh, I personally haven't used it, I just am aware of it. And what it does is uh, it, will it will allow for the import of new web forms. So if you develop a new web form on dev, uh, and, and deploy that to production, you can import that. Uh, but then on subsequent changes to it, it will not import it. So it's like a, it's like a one-time only import into a specific environment. Uh, so one of the, one of the keys uh, to success in, in this approach uh, is to be able to reliably determine what environment that uh, a particular site is operating within. Is it on the dev, on the dev server? or is it on the production server? Um, if, you, if you use one of the, the larger hosting companies, uh, two I've noted here are Acquia and Pantheon, they actually have an environment variable that tells you what environment that site is operating within. Uh, and essentially what we're gonna do is we're gonna leverage this uh, in our settings file uh, to be able to kind of um, do our own coordination of what configuration we are going to enable and ignore and override. So if you aren't hosting on one of these two, uh, check it with your support docs if you're self-hosting. Uh, you know, come up with a, a scheme that you, that you can reliably uh, uh, you know follow to determine what environments that uh, that you have operating. So uh, now we get to the uh, cooking portion of the show, uh, the config miso. Uh, so it's just an acronym that helps me, you know, keep in mind what we're dealing with. So we're dealing with core configuration management, configuration ignore, configuration splits, and configuration overrides. So the configuration management is just the core Drupal uh, configuration management. So it's your Drush config export, config import. It's just, if it's something that is going to be the same on every environment, let core manage that for you, because that's what it does, and it does that really, really well. Uh, so and then we have configuration ignore, and this is uh, basically you can identify configuration that you don't want imported into your site. So in our example, we had uh, block instances we don't want to import. So if a content manager is adding blocks to a production site, when we run drush config import, it's not going to blow away those block instances. It's not going to try to make the block instances that may exist in code uh, part of the production site. And you can be uh, very uh, specific with that configuration that you ignore, or you could also be very, um, you could use wildcards to, to capture a good chunk of configuration. Uh, one thing to note, and this is like one of those don't panic things, if you have configuration ignore enabled, and you do something in dev, like you create some blocks just for testing or whatever, and you do a config export, those blocks will still get exported even though they are ignored. It's on the import where the ignore actually takes place. So you could do things like uh, some git ignore rules or something like that if you want to keep the code base nice and clean. Uh, a couple of tips with config ignore. Number one is don't ignore config ignore. Uh, yeah. That is just asking for problems. Uh, and also, don't <coughs> excuse me. Don't ignore core dot extension. Uh, that is what modules are on or off. Uh, if you if you need to change those per environment, the next step is where where that comes into play. Uh, so I think I kind of spoke to these just a moment ago. So uh, block dot block dot star will get rid of all of your uh, block instances out of config import, as well as like if you use robots text module to manage uh, the robots.txt file. Uh, if you do robots.txt.settings, uh, those will be ignored uh, for, the, for you as well. And if you can get really, really specific and say, okay, we want content admins to be able to change the uh, language of the password reset email that goes out, but we don't want to manage that in config, you can get very specific with what you put into, those, uh, into that uh, config ignore configuration. So next we have configuration split, uh, and this is, <coughs> Uh, module that you would leverage when you have configuration in different environments that you want to be different. Uh, so um, it, it's basically what config split does is it, it uses config filter and it basically intercepts on config export 
uh, config split export, uh, the configuration that you have identified you want to be different. And it will actually store that in a different directory. Uh, and on the import side of things, if a split is active, the things in that folder are going to get imported into that environment. If it's not active, it will be disregarded. So in, in the case of, let's say, a development environment with the devel and web profiler modules enabled, you will want that split to be active on just the dev environment so that when you do a config import, those configurations for those modules, are, you know, the modules would be enabled and then also that configuration that you've set up for those modules would be active. And then if it's, uh, the split is inactive on staging and production, those modules don't even become enabled and you don't have to worry about them. Uh, and again, this is where leveraging the environment variable uh, will help. Uh, and in general, there are two kinds of splits. Um, personally, I, I don't like the naming convention for these, but I'm, I'm okay with it. Uh, <laughs> the first one is a complete split. And this is module is on or off and all of the configuration comes along for the ride if it's turned on. So you could have specific uh, settings, let's say for devel generate or de you know, the devel module enable uh, in general, and those, those settings will be coming in when you do the import. Then there's also the conditional uh, config split. And this is where you can kind of fine tune what configuration uh, would be in play. So example there, I think we'll see on the next slide, is uh, we want no caching turned on uh, in the system performance page for, for dev, but we really want to crank it to 11 on, on production. So you could have you know, the performance modules enabled but have different settings on those config forms essentially in different environments. Uh, okay, so then we have uh, configuration overrides, and, and these are these are these go all the way back in the in Drupal history to hard coding settings in settings.php that you need. Um, so these you would use these in cases where you you don't want a, a content administrator to inadvertently or intentionally change one of those values. If it's in the settings file, it is basically active configuration. Uh, some exa some examples that, that I have here uh, would be. Uh, using the robots text module to always tell it on dev and staging, uh, set uh, engine crawling to disallow everything. Uh, if you have a Google Tag Manager, uh, you could hard code that or some other API key, you could hard code those into settings that it would literally take a code deployment to, to affect that change. And then also, uh, a moment ago we were talking about the config splits being active or inactive. In here is where I recommend that you keep track of if something is active or not. There's a configuration split setting that you can make something active or, or inactive uh, in that environment. I recommend just turning them all off and only relying on settings.php to turn them on so that you can be sure that uh, it's not going to inadvertently be active on an environment that you, um, that you don't intend it to be. All right, so my solution here. So taking that spreadsheet from, I think, the second slide, uh, you know, we can look at the uh, different approaches that we can take for each of those line items. Uh, for the devel module and the web profiler module, we'll use config split. Uh, for, let's say, for the robots.txt, we're going to do, uh, kind of mix things up and say we're going to do config ignore for uh, dev and stage. And then what we are, uh, which would which would be, um, uh, sorry, override for dev and stage. Let me correct that. Doing an override for dev and stage, and then doing an ignore for production. And then for the environment indicator, green, yellow, red, we're going to do overrides for that uh, in the settings file. And then config ignore across the board uh, for ignoring the uh, block instances. So. To, to get this going uh, and to get it up and running, uh, we kind of need to follow through these steps here. Um, and this is my approach, and, and this is my way of approaching this problem in general. So uh, this is definitely one solution, and I know that it works. So I'm not saying you have to do it this way, but this is how I do it. Uh, the first is to set up the configuration ignores. So enable the module, configure those. And then we'll update the settings.php file with the environment detection. Um, then we'll go through and create the directories for the config split, and then we will go in and configure the splits, get those exported, and then create the, the specific overrides. Um, okay, so the config ignores, again, 
just enable the module. If you go to admin, config, development, configuration, ignore. Uh, in the configuration management section, there's a new tab for ignore. And you just put those patterns uh, of things that you want to ignore in there. And you can get uh, some good guidance about what strings to put in there by looking at the YAML files. Uh, if you want to ignore an entire YAML file, just drop the .yaml off and, and put it in here. If you want to ignore something very specific in there, just build the array. Uh, you know, put the pat, you know, put the name of the YAML file in there, and then build that array uh, in the dot notation here to get to where you want to, you know, the specific setting that you want to ignore. Uh, so then, uh, second step was enabling that uh, that dev, you know, the environment detection switch. I have two code snippets here on the screen. Uh, the first one on the left is basically grabbing the environment variable, in this case from Acquia, and if we don't find that environment variable, I'm just setting it to dev. Uh, that way my local, for example, and dev are gonna be very closely aligned, uh, if not exactly aligned when it comes to configuration. And then on the right, I've kind of stubbed out my, just a case statement uh, to uh, help determine what, you know, where, to, where to drop my uh, config overrides here. All right, and then uh, next would be to create those split directories. So just a, a make directory uh, or make directory command will do that. Uh, I recommend making them easily identifiable in their name. And the config split maintainers recommend putting those as a sibling direct directory to your main config sync uh, directory. In this case, I have it actually outside of the doc root uh, at the repo root. Uh, so uh, it's not in the site's default files uh, area and just have those set up and ready to go. Uh, so two, two things to note there, config split module will not make the directory, it'll kind of bark at you if it doesn't find the directory that you tell it uh, to export to. And then when it does that first export, it will create the HTTP access file that blocks uh, you know, just random browsing into that, into that directory. And then uh, this is, uh, I think we have time. I'm gonna hop into the demonstration portion of the cooking show. And so what we're gonna do uh, is basically create one of these config splits. So we've already, we've uh, got, the, got the settings.php updated, we've got our config ignore in place, and we've got um, uh, the, the directories made. So um, hopefully you guys can see this. I've got the, over here I have the directories made. And here I have the, uh, sorry, I have the um, configuration set up. And, and like any good cooking show, I've, I've prepared some things for you already, uh, since we can't cook a turkey in 20 minutes. So uh, here I have the environment uh, detection and then the switch here. So I have the environment indicator set up for uh, dev, and I have one for test that I'm hiding here, and down here we have production. And so when we go over, and I'm going to need to open my browser here. Give me just a moment. There we are. It's magic. It's right there. So here I have uh, just a local setup um, running dev. And we can tell it's dev because I have the, the green banner at the top since that's what uh, we're wanting to do. So I'm going to make a new configuration split for production. So looking back at our steps, uh, I need to in this case, artificially set my local to be production so I can do the configuration changes I want and get those exported to code so that when that code actually gets up to production, everything will be fine. So I'm going to uh, artificially set this to prod. And the key with making any changes to the settings file is to always do a drush cache rebuild uh, so it'll pick that up. So when that runs and we hit refresh, uh, when that eventually refreshes, we'll see same page, but now we'll have the red banner uh, at the top of the page. So live demos are awesome, right? So we have that. So uh, in, in this example, uh, let's say that we want to make sure that we have um, syslog uh, turned on and we'll turn that, that module on. So, so getting back to that spreadsheet, um, uh, we wanted you know, DB logging turned on for dev and stage and then uh, syslog only for production. So I've got syslog enabled now. And uh, then uh, oh, make any other configuration changes that you want specific to your production environment here. So under uh, configuration, I'm going to go to uh, performance and I'm going to 
set the caching all the way up and hit save. So we have that done now. So I now have my configuration that I want to manage for production set up for our example here. So I'm going to go hop over uh, back to the config split arena and I'm going to make a new configuration split and we're going to make it, uh, we're going to call it production, cleverly enough. Uh, and then in our folder, we put in the path that, we're gonna, that we've set up for that. Um, again, my recommendation, uncheck active uh, so that it's not turned on by accident. And then in conf uh, the complete split, uh, we want to do the syslog module. And then in conditional uh, split, we wanted that performance setting. So we did system.performance. Pardon me. Another, another setting that I uh, go against the default is there's a checkbox here for split only when different. So basically, it will keep a setting in active main config sync until you make any changes to it, uh, make changes to it, and then, um, uh, then it will like, make those splits for you. I do it this way just so it's broken out, it's clean, it's self-contained in that environment. And if you're going through the, the care to create a split for a specific setting, why would you, you know, the question I ask myself is why would I not want to just go ahead and manage it wholly as a split rather than having it the same in a couple different environments potentially. So I'm going to hit save. So now I have this uh, configuration saved. Uh, and then um, it, what I did here in my settings.php file as part of the pre-show, I uh, put in a config split, act, you know, basically setting the, active, setting the production split to active uh, using this, this uh, line of code here. <clears throat> and now I'm ready to export it. So right now we can see that the prod directory over here is empty. And if I don't want to scroll down to case prod. Uh, oh, you are correct. Sorry. Thank you. Case prod config split config split production is true. So I do have that there. Okay, great. Thank you for that. So now I'm going to do a drush config sync export. And the argument you pass to it is the name, the machine name of that split. Uh, so we're going we're gonna to run that. And it's going to confirm that I want to do it. And now when I look at my split directory, I have two files in here. One is the, the syslog settings, and the other is the, uh, the setting uh, for that page where I have that max age set. Uh, and if we were to uh, get into the weeds here and go down to in the main config directory after I do an export, drush cx, we'll see that there's a new uh, sorry, getting ahead of myself here. We'll see that there's a new config uh, split file for production. And it's really not that interesting of reading. Uh, of note here is an array of the modules that you're turning off and on in whole. And then up here, uh, down, down here in what is called gray list, which is that conditional split, uh, that's where that setting is. So um, you could, you know, if you wanted some fun nighttime reading, that, that's the place to do that. So now what I'm going to do uh, to kind of prove out that this works is in my settings.php file, I'm going to set this back to dev. And then I'm going to uh, clear cache. And when we come back over here, uh, we should see two things happen. The, the environment indicator bar is going to turn green. And then the status for the development config split will say active overwritten because that's what I have in settings.php file for that. So we have that, which is great. So now if I just do a drush uh, config import, uh, hopefully you can see this. What will happen is the things that were enabled on production are going to be, be turned off here. So uh, it's reverting the system.performance settings. It's turning off uh, the syslog um, module, which is great. Uh, but then, you know, again, just to prove it all out, if I go to production uh, and do the cache clear and then the config import, we'll see those modules come back on with those settings, if I did everything correctly. So yes, it looks like we have some success here. So 
uh, we can see that it installed uh, syslog for us and it updated the system performance uh, variables for us. So it, it is a little bit of, it feels a little bit like jumping through hoops to get it set up, but once you go through that once and you, you get that pattern down, life is so much easier when you are doing ongoing, ongoing daily development uh, for, uh, for, the, for the site. And again, the, this just kind of highlights the overrides. A lot of this is here for reference, so you can look at it later because I know I'm just like slamming on the accelerator through this presentation here. Um, a couple of uh, quick uh, tips that I have for you is, you know, when you make those changes to settings, always clear cache. Um, and you will, you will want to make sure that that setting is on the, in, your target environment before you make the configuration changes. And you, do, you keep that active, do the config export, and then you can change it back. Uh, otherwise, if you do a config import or a config export um, targeting the wrong environment, you're going to get that extra configuration like spit out to the main config as well, and then, then you have not happy developer days. Uh, so that's that. Um, we have four minutes. If the, any, any questions? Yeah, I was wondering how and how it just plays out in version control. I noticed your config split YAML files is set or whatever. Mm -hmm. How does this system work with your version control? It works perfectly. With uh, the the question was how do, how do the config splits work with version control? Um, it works well. It, I mean it. it these are you know separate files that get exported, and so they're just managed uh, with with get. Um, so in the example of the gray the gray list, uh, like you mentioned, so here for, here for production, uh, you know the gray list is we have that system dot performance. So it grabs all the config settings from that that uh, page, uh, but then when we go up here, uh, in sorry, I'm gonna go one place first. So we have system.performance in the main config directory. We can see that caching is not turned on right now. But then if we were to go up to the config split directory for production and look at that system.performance, we can see that caching is turned on. So all these will get committed. And then uh, when you do the Drush config import, uh, like on production, it's gonna have that environment switch to know that it needs to bring this one in so it, it's just managed, you know, uh, just like any other files and, and from that respect. I think we had a question here first. So can you uh, play out a scenario where you have, a, let's say, a GitHub token in your configuration file, uh, some kind of API key mm -hmm. um, with split? How would you manage that? Because typically what we end up doing is including like an override sit, like settings file mm -hmm. out of code repository completely. Right. So would that play nicely with splitting and ignoring? Yeah, I think I think it would. Question? Oh, yeah, the, the question is um, how could you handle something like a GitHub token uh, in a directory that's outside of code management? Is that is that the right version. rephrasing? Yeah, yeah. Uh, outside of version control? Yeah. So you could definitely have like um, a home directory or a user directory, you know, on the server for each environment, and do that include a, you know, if, you know, include that file. Um, it plays nice in that database config is first, and then it will do depending on how you sequence it in your settings file. It'll either do, um, you know, your your home directory settings file override, your environment settings file override, or the main settings. PHP. So just, it, I think it would be more of where, how you sequence those, um, because the, the config split isn't read every time. Uh, it's only on config import. Does that make make sense? Absolutely. Okay. Great. Uh, question here. So assuming you're copying your config sync into an install profile, but you don't have split set up, like what do you need to do to accommodate splits if you're trying to generate an install profile. That, the, the question is, how do you manage uh, config splits uh, via a install profile? And I am going to be very honest and say I don't know. Uh, I haven't had to, to come across that scenario, so I don't, I could hypothesize, but I don't want to do Is there a better alternative to install profiles we should be looking at, or? I don't think so. 
I think I think install profiles are, are a good thing. Yeah. Okay. I think we have time for one more question here. Is there any way to turn off a module in, in one split, or, or do you just have to enable it in all the other splits? Uh, question? Yeah, yeah. Uh, you want like kind of the negate uh, the scenario. Um, that I I don't know that that I have an answer for that uh, for you as well of, of being able to turn off a module in uh, turn up, turn off a module in all but one environment. Uh, I think the the split in the um, yeah the the split for like the the bell module you know you have that on one environment off in the other two but that that converse I don't know that you would be able to do that unless you added that module to those two other splits. Okay, I see that we are at time. I'm gonna just kind of hang out back there. If you guys have any questions or anything, uh, please, if you have a moment, uh, go to mid.camp slash 250. That's my node for the presentation, provide some feedback. And uh, yeah, Saturday is contribution day. So if you're so inclined to hang out here. Thank you.